Yeah, it's really nice to see everyone here. Um, yeah, my name is Patrick, and I'm the senior software engineer on the groups team here at Clavio. And today, we'll be talking about how we rebuilt our segmentation system around ClickHouse. And this is, in large part, the first technical unveiling of a project that has spanned uh, thousands of hours for a full team of people uh, over the course of a year. It's consisted of 30 epics, 117 features, and 821 user stories. At a glance, our new segmentation system is responding to billions of updates per day for millions of segments. It's generating tens of billions of segment membership updates per day, all while saving a significant amount of money on infrastructure. So let's start with an overview of what segmentation is. Clavio is a marketing automation platform, and we let our customers segment their user profiles into uh, different buckets based on criteria. Uh, so on this slide, on the left, you'll see an example of what a user profile looks like and some data that we collect about them, and on the right, an example segment. These segments are themselves composed of stanzas, and each stanza itself is composed of criteria. So we'll order together the results of criteria in a stanza and then and the stanzas together to produce a final result. There's two core modes of segmentation, the first of which we call manual segmentation. And this is when someone creates a new segment or updates an existing one. We'll populate an initial set of segment memberships. The second mode is real-time segmentation. And so we're receiving new events and new, new data about these user profiles. And we'll want to make sure to add or remove them appropriately. Um, just to, to maintain uh, uh, the segment memberships over time. Let's talk about the old approach. So our old approach was orchestrated in Python. And when we had to compute segment memberships, we would, in Python, iterate over user profiles and then make a series of queries to different databases uh, to determine whether or not these profiles qualify. Some of these databases were MySQL OLTP databases where we'd store pro profile property data or uh, we'd store consent data. We were also storing our events in a pre-aggregated format in Cassandra, though. Um, so an example of uh, this pre-aggregated format is the number of placed order events for a profile in the last 30 days or the number of placed order events in the last seven days. Uh, there were a number of problems with our old approach, though. Segmentation times uh, were actually quite long, especially for our biggest customers. Sometimes it would take over one hour to compute a segment, and our customers wanted to be able to iterate quickly. Um, so this was uh, undesirable and something that we wanted to change. Our Cassandra implementation was also quite hard to work with. It wasn't scaling well, and the cluster itself consisted of hundreds and hundreds of nodes, so it was also very expensive. Uh, we computed many of these counters, even if they weren't being used. Uh, because we wouldn't necessarily know which counters people would be using when we were ingesting and, and uh, populating these counters, ingesting events and populating the counters. Uh, the setup was also inflexible, because if we wanted to add new counters, we would have to replay over a trillion events. Uh, and so we started thinking about how we could re-architect the system. And we landed on an alternate approach where we would effectively replicate all of the data that can be segmented on into one central database and then execute queries to generate the segment memberships from there. We landed on ClickHouse uh, because we knew it was very fast, uh, had a rich feature set, and we also had in-house experience with it. Great. <laughs> so our ClickHouse cluster is uh, uh, it consists of 192 nodes, which is probably bigger than some other deployments. Um, it uses bi-level sharding, uh, which really just means that we have two sharding keys. The first sharding key is the company ID, and this is a unique ID for each of our customers. So we subdivide our 192 nodes into eight layers, as we call them, and um, we're achieving isolation between companies here, uh, which has many nice benefits. So. Uh, the bad usage patterns for one company won't affect the others. We then further subdivide a layer into shards uh, by profile ID. And so we're evenly distributing all of the profiles in a company across eight shards. We then have a replication factor of three uh, replicating all of the data. 
We have three core tables that we'll talk about today. The first is our traits table. And this is just a generic table that stores data about user profiles. It stores multiple different types of data alongside each other, and they're different. This data is differentiated by a source ID column. So we'll store profile property data in the traits table. We'll also store consent data there. Uh, this is using a replicated replacing merge tree table engine, uh, replacing on the created at timestamp. Uh, and so effectively, when ClickHouse performs a merge asynchronously, we have this guarantee that the record with the greatest created at timestamp will remain, and all of the other records will be uh, discarded. Uh, this has had many, many big benefits for us. Uh, it's enabled us to relax our ordering constraint and our change data capture pipelines as we're ingesting data into the ClickHouse cluster because we have this assurance that we'll always be operating on the most up-to-date record, and so we don't have to maintain strict ordering. It's also made our repair and backfill process into this cluster really easy, uh, because if there's stale data or inaccurate data, we can just refresh that with the correct data. We also have our events table, and this is an append-only log of events. It's partitioned by month. And then we have our segment definitions table, uh, where we store a representation of all the, the segment definitions that we care about. <clears throat> so let's talk about our change data capture pipelines. It's relatively straightforward. For events, uh, we consume from a topic and batch together and then insert into ClickHouse. For traits, it's a little bit more complicated, but when trait data changes, we emit a notification message. And then uh, we have a fleet of consumers that will consume these notification messages and then query the source of truth databases. It'll fetch the data, transform it into a format that ClickHouse uh, accepts, and then publish that to a topic. And then we'll read from that and perform batch inserts into ClickHouse. Our two core modes of segmentation. Uh, first, um, when creating or updating a segment, we'll publish a task to a queue, a segmentation task. And then we have a host that will consume these messages in batches and insert that updated definition into ClickHouse. It'll then execute a query that will, that will generate the segment memberships. From there, we then send the results back to our core application. Uh, for real-time segmentation, it's a little bit more complicated, but we have a materialized view attached to our core data tables, events, and traits. And uh, so when we're inserting data into those data tables, the materialized view will populate a record in a change log table, which has a, a seven-day TTL. And this table is ordered by the ingestion timestamp. And we have a host that will query these change log tables on a sliding time window and, and identify everything that changed. And then for those profiles, update segment memberships. Uh, we'll then ship all of those results back to the core application. So let's zoom in on our query pipeline. It consists of two main steps. First, we'll create a series of ClickHouse temporary tables. And then after we set up those temporary tables, we'll then execute our core membership query that generates the results. And this has had a number of big benefits for us. It's enabled us to decompose our queries into a series of logical pieces, uh, which has helped a lot with readability and onboarding new folks. Uh, right now, our core segmentation query is over 1,300 lines long. And so it helps being able to uh, slim that down a little bit. It's also had the great benefit of enabling us to define our working schema at read time. Uh, this makes it really easy to make changes because um, we can update that working schema in the same pull request as a change to the query and then ship all of that out at the same time without having to worry about updating data um, in the database in a, a persistent storage way. Cool, let's talk about our queries. So in this example, um, in diagram number one, there's a trait row. And uh, this is a profile property record for a user profile. And you'll notice that there's a column called property data. And this is a map that uh, has two fields in it. Um, but, uh, it. It basically just stores data about um, the, the user profile. And so in this example, there's a first name uh, field. And the, the name is John. And there's an email domain field. And the email domain is example.com. And below that, we have a trait criteria record, which has a column called trait filters. And this trait filters column is a list of tuples. And each tuple represents some condition uh, for satisfying that criteria. 
And so in this case, the, um, the filter is the email domain must equal example.com. We'll perform a join on these two records, and the result of that join is shown in diagram number two. And so if we look at this, we can say that this profile would qualify for that criteria. We will then evaluate these uh, filters against the, the property data. And the way that we're doing that is uh, generally modeled in diagram number three. But we're using an array all operation over the, the trait criteria and passing in the, the filter arguments into this type compare function. And this type compare function is, the, it is something that we have defined. And it enables us to evaluate arbitrary filters against data. And it's been working very well for us. A general example uh, of what the type compare function looks like is included here. But uh, on the left, uh, you'll notice that we're casing on the data type. And then depending on the data type, we'll call one of a few different helper functions. And so um, on the right, we'll see the number compare function and we case on the operator. And then from there, perform one of a series of different comparisons. So we've spoken about how we compute the qualification status for profile for a given criteria. But if we remember, segments are composed of stanzas, and each stanza can have criteria in them. And we need to compute a final result. And the way that we're doing that is with bitmaps. So in the inner subquery here, we're using the group bitmap or state function. And so we're effectively oring together the results of criteria in a stanza. Uh, to compute the qualification status for a stanza. And then in the parent query, we're using the group bitmap and state aggregate function, and we're adding together the results from the different stanzas. Uh, and the result of this is a set of profiles that qualifies for, or rather a bitmap of profiles that qualifies for a given segment. Using bitmaps uh, has worked very well for us. Um, the ClickHouse implementation uses roaring bitmaps, which is very compact and uh, performant. Uh, it's also very flexible. There's many different bitmap functions that you can use. And then when you combine them with combinators, uh, there's a very rich feature set. Um, so it's been really a delightful experience using those. Um, one small note there is um, we had to lean more heavily on unsigned integers because those are the, the data types accepted by bitmaps. And so if you're looking to use them, then it might be worth accounting for that when you're designing a schema. Cool. So we spent a lot of time setting up our cluster, populating it with data, and writing initial versions of the queries. But when we started first executing these queries against the cluster with all of the data loaded in, we noticed that the queries were taking a long time. And we are also frequently running out of memory. And so we ended up spending a considerable amount of time performance tuning these queries. And a lot of key optimizations came out of this process. Uh, we're not going to touch on all of them today. Uh, we'll zoom in onto one specifically. So we noticed that we were frequently evaluating the same filter uh, multiple times for a given profile. Uh, and so at Clavio, we offer our customers the ability to clone a segment. And so we found that many times people would clone a segment and then modify it slightly. And the result of that is that they would have many different segments, but generally with similar criteria in them. And so if you look at the diagram here, on the left, you'll see the old representation. And so we had two different trait, tri trait criteria. And in these trait criteria, there was one common filter. And our previous approach would evaluate that filter twice, which um, like we recognized to be extra work. And we found that we could eliminate that if we changed our representation for uh, trait criteria. And so the new representation is shown on the, the right. Right now, we store these uh, in an array of tuples. And the first element in that tuple is the filter. And the second element in that tuple is a bitmap of the criteria IDs. That, that filter um, that, that is associated with the given filter. And so uh, we've translated the old representation to the new representation. And you'll notice that we have the old filter with, or the first filter with a bitmap that has um, criteria, criteria IDs 100 and, and 105. And then below that, the second filter and uh, the second criteria ID. We then combine these bitmaps together using 
uh, bitmap aggregate functions uh, to determine which criteria a profile qualifies for. And so uh, we or together bitmaps where the filter qualified or the filter passed, and then we'll or together the bitmaps where the filter, filter did not qualify. Uh, here, we then call the bitmap and not function. And we're basically saying um, there is at least one filter uh, for, for this criteria. There's at least a profile, rather. There's at least one filter that qualifies and no filters that don't qualify. And if that condition satisfies, then we know that this profile uh, should qualify for that criteria. So, and it's in the qualifying set and not in the non-qualifying set. Cool. So we've spoken a lot about the, the work that we've been doing around this project and the performance optimizations uh, thereof. Uh, we wanted to show the results of that, though. In this diagram, on the x-axis is time in minutes, and on the y-axis is a log scale of segmentation requests. Uh, the top graph shows the old system, and the bottom one, uh, the bottom graph, shows the new system. And as you can see, it's much faster. Um, so what's next? A few days ago, we published our first blog post series talking about how this segmentation system works. And so feel free to check that out at flavio.tech. Um, we're going to be publishing more blog posts in the coming weeks. And so uh, feel free to follow along there as well. There's also a number of improvements that we're looking to make in the future. Uh, one of the ones that improvements that excites us the most is the separation of compute and storage, uh, which is something that's built into ClickHouse Cloud. And we think there's a number of benefits there. Uh, one of the key benefits is that it would enable us to share underlying data with other teams. And so if one team makes a repair to that data or improves the structure of it, then we can benefit from their work as well. There's also a number of query, or query performance improvements that we're aiming to make, uh, new features. And we also have uh, some changes that we'd like to make to our results pipeline, which is what extracts memberships from ClickHouse and then sends them to our uh, durable like my SQL storage. So as you can see, this has been a very big team effort involving many people. And uh, yeah, we're excited to have released this system into production and uh, realize the savings and the benefits. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your time. And uh, we're happy to take any questions that you might have. <laughs> <laughs>